Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching episode 134 from the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the different bits that I use in my CNC machine for cutting out guitar bodies, necks, and fretboards. First things first, my CNC machine makes use of a DeWalt DW611 trim router and that has a collet of a quarter inch in diameter, which means all of the bits that I use must have a shank of a quarter inch in diameter. I can't use anything larger than that. However, in my experience, I really have never needed to use a larger bit. I'm not into high speed mass production, so quarter inch is just fine for what I use. Now, there are a lot of bits that I use which have an eighth of an inch uh, shank. And to use those, I have to use, it's just a simple, adapter and this goes from a quarter inch outside diameter to an uh, inner diameter of an eighth of an inch and that allows me to use the eighth inch shank bits with my CNC machine. All right so what you see here are all the different bits that I use for CNCing my guitars and this is really all I use and these are the ones that do the, most of the heavy work. Um, these are quarter inch diameter two flute bits. And the reason I have three of them is because they're slightly different. Obviously this one's longer than the other two. Uh, this is a bit that I use when I cut out the contour shape of a guitar. Uh, it, typically the blanks that I use are anywhere from one and a half to two inches thick. So I need a, a longer bit to get all the way through the wood. This one is um, it's basically the same as this one, but it's shorter, and I typically will use this when I'm cutting out anything less than a half inch depth. So uh, most of my pickup pockets, neck pockets, and um, I use this one to cut the back contour of, of my guitar necks. And these two are what are known as upcut bits, and that means as the bit is cutting, it's pulling the chips up and out of the uh, pocket or the slot that it's cutting. And that just leaves it a lot cleaner and reduces the potential for the pocket or the uh, slot to fill up with wood chips and jam the router, which has never happened with me, but um, it's always nice to know that uh, I'm not going to have that issue. Uh, this particular bit is exactly the same as these, but with one difference. As you if you look closely, you can see that the spirals are going in the opposite direction. That's because this is a down cut bit. So when it's cutting, it's pushing the wood chips down. And what that does is it allows me to start a cut from the top and get a cleaner edge. There's no fraying and there's no chip out. Chip out can be a real problem with certain types of woods like figured maple. So if that's going to be the case, I'll start my cut using the down cut bit and I'll go maybe an eighth of an inch deep and then once I'm, I've, I've finished that eighth inch deep cut, I'll switch to one of the longer bits and, or the, one of the um, up cut bits and finish the cut using those. And when a bit like this gets all the way down through the wood and cuts through the back side, because it's pulling the chips up, there isn't the problem of a rough frayed edge at the bottom of the cut. So I hope that makes sense. But these are the three bits that I use which do most of the heavy lifting. And these bits are, these are all eighth inch shank bits. And what I have here, this is an eighth inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. And I typically use this for cutting, for example, a truss rod slot, or if I need to drill any holes that are larger than an eighth of an inch in diameter, I'll use this bit. And this has a flat end. In fact, all these bits have uh, flat ends with the exception of this one. This is an eighth inch spiral um, upcut bit, but it has a rounded um, what they call a ball end. And I use this bit for cutting a fretboard radius because with the right settings on the finishing pass, this bit will leave a nice smooth 
perfectly radiused fretboard and all I have to do is just give it a light rub down with some fine grit sandpaper to remove any residual tool marks that can be left over. This bit here is a 16th inch diameter two flute spiral up cut. Again, it's a flat end mill. And I use this mainly to drill holes that are uh, smaller than an eighth of an inch, but larger than a sixteenth of an inch. And that would be, for example, holes that I would drill in the body to mount a bridge. And I also use this bit to hog out most of the wood on my inlays. And um, I'll either use the sixteenth or the eighth inch, depending on the design. And what I try to do is carve out as much wood as I can using either one of these bits, whichever one is going to do the work the fastest. Then I'll switch over to a um, smaller bit like this 30 degree V bit and it, it has a 30 degree angled sides and a very sharp tip and I can use this bit to carve out the last little details in my inlay and I can use this bit um, as opposed to like a 32nd of an inch diameter bit, an even smaller bit, I can use this bit and run my CNC much faster and I can actually cut the full depth without the risk of breaking the bit. So I can get my inlays done much faster than if I were to use just a smaller straight bit. And speaking of small straight bits, this is the last bit that I use. This is a 0 0.023 inch diameter uh, two flute spiral upcut bit and you know you probably are, can just barely see that the end of that cutter. This is the bit that I use for cutting my fret slots and um, this bit does a really nice job of, of cutting those slots and I can go to the full depth um, equal to or greater than the actual uh, depth of the tang. So this bit works really well for that. Now obviously with with all these different bits I have different feed and speeds uh, for each cutting operation. And what I plan to do in the next episode is talk a little bit more about the feeds and speeds that I use for different cutting operations on a guitar body, guitar neck, and fretboard. Okay, well there you have it. Uh, I'm basically using eight different bits in my CNC machine when I cut out bodies, necks, and fretboards. So um, hopefully that's information you can use and I'll try and put a link in the description below so that you can go out and uh, check out some of these bits yourself. But just be aware it is a constantly changing market so I can't guarantee I can find links to each and every one. So that's it and um, we will see you in episode 135 of From the Luthier's Workbench, where I will talk a little bit more about uh, the feeds and speeds that I use for all the different kinds of cutting operations that I do with my CNC machine. So until then, take care, and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.